what you said about being skeptical. Okay. I, I find um, a lot of people, they're interested in the workshop, but the question I get asked, how do you know it works? Because energy is not something we see. Um, pranic healing is exp experiential. It's not visible. It's not physical, at least for most people. Coming from a, somebody who used to be skeptical about this modality, what would you, what would your your advice be to somebody who is in a similar mind frame? I think when we go, skepticism itself is healthy. It's when you have closed mindedness that becomes an issue. So, for the public, there's a difference between being skeptical, which is asking questions or showing doubt. But there's also a difference between, which is different from being closed minded and not being open to any new ideas that come in. Um, I, when I was going through all this, because I didn't have necessarily a lot of background in any of this, I would just, okay, this is new and different, but we'll see what happens. So uh, Master Cho always used to teach that we have intelligent evaluation, meaning that stay open-minded, learn every, all the information that's coming in. And the most important thing is to experiment with it and then make your own conclusion. So he taught, because we all come from different backgrounds and different skill sets and beliefs. So take what you want from the classes, which was, you know, comforting to me and play around with it, with it, with it, with it. And, um, and that's with anything new we learn. It's going to be, the learning process itself is supposed to be uncomfortable because we don't know about it yet. So in order to feel more comfortable with it, you know, we mull around with it, we play with it, and then we see what comes out of it. And for me, from the skeptical background, I would take things, I would question, how does this work? Why does it work? And just practice it. Because the only way you can really learn something or understand if it works or doesn't work is if you experiment and practice the techniques. Now say you worked on 100 people with sweeping or something like that and no one got better, then you can say most likely that, well, these teachings don't work. But if you're at the point where you only work on one person and it doesn't show anything, then then you, to make the conclusion that it does or does not work, it, you have a very small sample size. So in the medical world, we're all about um, using research to see a result. And so that's why we keep on changing sometimes the guidelines and recommendations because as our research improves and our technique gets better and our sample sizes increase, we can see a standard. So um, pranic healing itself, the techniques are relatively new. We only started in 1987. Uh, so as our sample size increases, we're seeing better and better results over time across different populations and different scenarios, which is what Master Cho said is more of a science. Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> I think, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, I think he said, don't believe everything I say, but at the same time, don't dis disbelieve everything I say until you have the, the ability to validate it for yourself. Right, right. And sometimes this is what I joke about with my colleagues. I'm like, we assume that a medication is going to all the receptors uh, in the body. Receptors are what actually holds the molecules of the medication, we'll just say. We're assuming all those things are occurring, but I can't microscopic, make my view microscopic to see the actual interaction. So to a certain degree, it's, it's, um, we're just assuming that something's working. Uh, so it's well, just, it's just that's a great analogy. That's a, that's a fantastic analogy. I mean, wow. My mind just went when you said that. It's amazing, right? The way, the way, if you change your perspective, um, it dismantles our, sometimes you need the dismantling of a concept to open your mind.